Today we are reviewing the first Omen. Join us as we explore this fascinating and horrifying new release. But first... <laughs> This episode of Horror Movie Talk is brought to you by Big Fat Baby Incorporated. Are you too scared to go to the new horror movie your friends have been raving about? Well, here at Big Fat Baby Incorporated, we strive to make getting out of terrifying theatrical experiences easy and shame-free. No one wants to be called a scaredy cat, and with our services, you'll never have to. Next time your friend invites you to a scary movie you that you know you can't handle just accept their invitation and as you walk into the theater text our number and we'll give you a call immediately with a realistic yet fictional reason why you have to leave the theater immediately excuses you will be able to tell your friends include my mom just lost a hot dog eating contest and i need to be there for her to clean up the sausagey vomit mess or holy cow my house just got swallowed by a sinkhole among others. So call us now, and depending on how big of a big fat baby you are, we might just throw in a get out of jail free card where we use a small electronic device to shut off all screens in your theater <laughs> for a full two hours. Looking for a podcast full of burps and gas, perverted cast, skinny and fat, look no further. Horror movie talk is accidentally funny, begs to donate money, fake sponsors for dummies, and so much more. New episodes every hump day, they'll pickle your dickle for foreplay. Patreon members have it your way, vote for a movie every month for the review. Chopper chopper, don't just stare at it, eat it like a taco, put your tongue through the the phone hoodie Picasso Look at them hot kids swearing not a pedo Got me too with Cosby eating jello Putting pop done gave Bryce flatulence Train addict addict Dave doesn't give a shit One through ten is it horrible or excellent Oil me up daddy is dinner rum Ten kids Bryce Hansen Look at them hot kids Chris Henson Masturbate with a crucifix exorcist Face huggers, chest bursters, alien. Linda Blair peed on Sigourney Weaver. I know it's true, cause it came from social media. Patrick Bateman can't understand so you. <laughs> Stab you to death for rotten apple reviews. <laughs> Opinionated podcast of Winter Doctor Spook allergy, Doctor What Philosophy. <laughs> Alright, and then it ends. <laughs> Oh, I forgot what I was doing. I got so lost in that. Uh, <laughs> hello, and welcome to Horror Movie Talk. I'm Max <laughs> Allen, but fuck me, right? Who you really want to <laughs> see is... <laughs> Who you really want to see is my co-host, the incredible Sydney Lee, who is the foremost expert <laughs> in being a foremost expert. And Bryce Hansen, oh the gosh. golden god of horror movie reviews. We review a different <laughs> horror movie each week. New theatrical releases always get priority, but we also review older horror movies, both good and horrible. <sighs> Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Full video is available on YouTube. Don't be a square. Make sure to share. Also check out patreon.com slash horror movie talk, the equivalent of the adult section at your video rental store if there still were some. <laughs> If you want to add your P to the community pool, go to horrormovietalk.com or call 682-253-4468 and leave us a voicemail. We've got a great show for you today. We will be reviewing The First Omen. We start out by giving a brief review and our score for the movie we score on a scale of 1 to 10. After we give our score, we'll get into spoilers and take a deeper dive into what we liked and hated about the film. Later on, we will be playing Where the Fuck Did the Money Go, a game where Bryce and Sydney will be guessing how much money Blumhouse spent on some of their movies, and in the end, we'll all be asking, where did all this money go? That's uh, I. That's fun. I can't wait. Very inventive. Yeah. I'm an inventive guy. Not as inventive <laughs> as you guys, but still inventive. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is our YouTube channel comment section. Yeah, just spit the mess. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. And this is Max. Max's fun internal here. dialogue. Uh, you guys are so mean to Max. I know. Every day. Just, Every just day. because... He's never seen any movie and has zero interest in doing so. 
I like, love horror movies. I'm here for horror movies. <laughs> if you ask me what's the best bowling movie, I'm going to tell you. I don't know, probably that Lebowski guy. But <laughs> I haven't seen it. you got to stop talking about the Coen brothers like that. You're going to get more comments. <laughs> you know, honestly, the best bowling movie probably isn't the Big Lebowski. It's probably... Uh... Oh, shit. What was that Farrelly Brothers movie? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I haven't I'm seen so it. Old. I can't. I can't remember. Anyways, um, yeah. So Max suffers from the same disease that I have, which is being way too dry and believable in your humor, especially when you're leaning into something. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I told you guys about this on text, but I remember distinctly going to see Battlefield Earth with my friends. <laughs> yeah. In high school. And we were walking out of the theater. Battlefield Earth, by the way, is probably the worst movie I've ever seen. It's until I saw Skin of Marink. Okay. But Battlefield Earth was okay. like <laughs> impressively awful in almost every single way. And uh, yeah, look it up. came out of the theater and I just went like, oh, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> just like obviously a joke. And my friends like didn't say anything. Or laugh, and then years later, they're like, "Whatever, dude. You thought Battlefield Earth was good?" I was like, "What? <laughs> you couldn't possibly believe I was serious." The movie literally is at three so, percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I just looked it yeah. up. <laughs> it's bad. Um, yeah. Listen, after the show, Bryce sometimes gives us some notes, and he'll be like, "Max, I really like that you said this. You should do that more." And so I'll go into the next episode really hamming up that side of my personality, going way too far, and then people are like, "Wow, this guy sucks because of this exact reason." And I'm like, "I was literally joking, but it's I okay." Mean, now I they're just calling Max... me ugly, which I can't even refute. It's like, yeah, how do you that's, even? That's too much. What do you even do about that? Wait, no. No one called you. Someone ugly? said oh, that he you was. You haven't ugly. seen the hidden reviews. Oh. Like someone, oh. it was the same person that you got in a fight with on the episode before. A fight with? I was defending a fight. myself. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. And then they came on the. I forget exactly what it said, but it was like, "Oh, Max said he's hot. You look like a f ugly fifteen-year-old or something." I don't know what it was. <laughs> a fifteen-year-old douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I was That's making a joke. Okay, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anymore. But all all is this to say is honestly, like, I don't, I don't like that people are being mean to you. But I also agree that I don't even know sometimes when you're so good at your bits that at the end of the episode, when you're finally like, you know, I was joking. I'm like, oh, my God, that was so good. Like, it was so good that I don't. <laughs> but I'm you. also a very gullible person. So that is just also something. But um, I feel like yeah, I'm just I'm sarcastic <laughs> all the time. And so it's hard for me to turn it off. Even I, sometimes I don't even notice it until I'm done saying what I'm saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine you know what well i just i i think um max is quickly becoming the heel of the of the podcast like i i thought sydney was going to be the heel to be honest like, mm -hmm. we're i was getting ready for she's got healable qualities the villain. Thank she's you. got healable qualities like it sydney's the easiest like the one to shit on for some reason thank you like she's just so innocent and you, you just it's like a perfect punching bag All right, yeah. but then max you just like come out i'm just so hateable gate. it's so easy you're just it comes so naturally. hateable <laughs> and <laughs> you're like vince mcmahon walking down the aisle it's like no i don't get that reference okay <laughs> I'll, I'll have to i'll have to look <laughs> You haven't seen anything. Max. I know. You know. No movie. Max has I haven't never seen, seen a, a movie. single movie. Not even the one we're reviewing. Um, <laughs> the First Omen can be found in theaters now. The First Omen is a Catholic horror movie and prequel to the movie The Omen. Maggie, or Margaret, is a Catholic sister who moves from the United States to work in an all-girls orphanage and take her vows as a nun. While there, she takes to a troubled girl named Carlita. That was her name, right? It was kind of... Yeah, yeah. Some, okay. Carlita, who seems to be slipping through the cracks of the orphanage while the other nuns consider her a lost cause and disturbed child. As she learns more about Carlita's past, 
Margaret struggles to protect her from the church, which seems to have a sinister plan for her. The devil's involved. It's a whole thing. The first omen is directed by Arkasha Stevenson, maybe, who co-wrote the movie with Tim Smith and Keith Thomas. Nell Tiger Free stars as Margaret and gives a stunning performance as the young nun. My review is the first omen is everything that Immaculate wishes it could be. They're almost the same movie. It's just one is good and I didn't like the other one. Uh, (laughs) It's dark and sinister, giving a fresh and incredibly disturbing take on a Catholic horror movie. The movie is long, which I am known for being a critic of, but I didn't check my watch one time during this two hour long movie. It's shocking without being distasteful, and Nell Free's character, Margaret, is uh, del- just delightful to watch and gives a performance that I think will be studied and copied by many possession movies to come. Even with some of the seemingly out-of-nowhere revelations that keep the plot moving, I enjoyed the twists and turns. It's scary, it's disturbing, and it's fun. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I think um, I think this movie is was really good. It really surprised me. Um because I am a known hater of sequels or prequels. But um, yeah, I was actually scared. Like I, we've been to the movies a lot for new movies that have been coming out recently. And this was the first time that I've actually been terrified in a theater for a, since I was a teenager, probably. I was very scared. There was a, there's a car accident that happens towards the end of the movie that the exact noise of it almost sent me into a panic attack because it sounded exactly like when I totaled my car a couple of years ago and I had to like calm myself down being like nope you're not in your car right now like that's how scary it was and I was I was honestly riveted by how scared I was um the only thing I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 the only thing preventing me from giving it a 10 out of 10 was that I guessed the twist like the big twist mm. Um, very early on into the movie. Um, I feel like the trailer kind of gives it away a little bit. I, I never mean, saw... I, I didn't really focus on the trailer. I think I only saw it, like, once. I, so There's still I some mystery, but there's definitely a lot of, like... Uh, well, I don't want to give it away for people who, who don't know what it's about, so... Yeah, but 9 out of 10. Um, also, that one point that I took off, besides guessing the twist, was that that was my first day of no nicotine... So I was, <laughs> was very irritable oh, all day. Oh no. wow! <laughs> but we're proud. Are, are you are you taking the plunge? You're gonna get rid of uh, the nicotine. Day three, baby. It's day three today. Wow. Day three. Congratulations. Wow. Yep. Thank you. Just white knuckling it. Yep. Cold turkey. Uh, it's the only way I can do it. Every time that I've quit, I've only ever done it cold turkey. So, yeah. Wow. Well, good for you. Thank you. You're just gonna replace it with pot then. <laughs> no, I don't know. I no, actually, I do know what I'm replacing it with. I got a gym membership, so. Oh wow! A gym. Yeah. One of those people. I have to do something. <laughs> I, have to do I started something. replacing my my talkies with uh, baby carrots, so it's kind of the same thing. Oh. Talkies? What's a talkie? You don't know what a talkie is, dude. Oh, yummy! The most flavorful chip on earth yummy, that also destroys chip. your gut and gives you oh, cancer. Oh, tackies. Okay. Tackies. Talkies. I was thinking. <laughs> I call them tackies. Tackies. Because, <laughs> yeah, tackies. Yeah, they're There's called, no L they're called there. talkies. 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 Like, I mean, that's what I call films now, because I grew up <laughs> yeah. when there was no sound. You know. I watched the talkies. Max wouldn't know anything about that. He's only started watching movies last year. Mm-hmm. Well, it, literally. Okay, so <laughs> let me explain my movie history. I grew up Mormon couldn't watch rated r movies so if it was rated r probably didn't see it i maybe snuck in a few you know went on a mission for two years which meant i couldn't watch any movies for two whole years i'm getting so distracted by Sydney i'm sorry trying i couldn't to get the focus it's focused focus now i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry max sorry 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 that's why i proceed max then i came home from my mission i'm 20 years old and i've seen a handful of horror movies <clears throat> So I basically didn't even start watching horror movies till I was 20 years old, and I haven't really gotten into other genres that much. So I think it's pretty impressive that I've seen what I've seen, only having been watching movies for a few years. When you were a kid, did you like watch like Disney movies and stuff? 
Sure. I was just asking. Here, we ha- we have a exclusive video of, of Max returning home from his mission. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> what is this? It's a wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he walking like He's that? He's like, I'm coming home. I'm going to watch some horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull up a picture of me coming home from my mission. I have this I have this picture saved. Where is it? There oh there it is. Wait, no, where'd it go? There it is. I should find my old mission album and sh- holy cow. Me directly. That's what off you looked like when you were twenty? No, I was I was twelve in that picture. Oh. <laughs> okay. Jesus. I was gonna, I was say. gonna say. <laughs> I was oh like, God. holy cow, dude. You changed a lot in five years, Max. <laughs> yeah. Went on your mission before your balls dropped. Yeah. Um well, anyways, about this movie, um, yeah, I was really impressed with this one, and I'm I'm going to just really underline how much this movie showed how bad of an actor Sidney Sweeney is. <laughs> yeah. You know, watching him back to back, I was like, honestly, oh, oh, this is what acting looks like, because, <laughs> like, Nell F- Free, what's, is that her name? Nell Tiger Free. Yeah. Nell Tiger Free. Um. I mean, her middle name's Tiger, so I mean, Jesus, I mean. And her first name is already, Nell, which I'm went. suggesting for uh, my baby's name, thinking about it. Yeah, so Nell Free, like, is a really good actor. Mm-hmm. Like, she was able to communicate so much Insane. through, like, looks and glances and, like, able to communicate shame and, like, intrigue and, like, all this stuff. Um where you're like oh yeah i'm really engaged with this movie just because i like watching this woman's face mm-hmm. react to what's going on and it all makes sense it makes you feel like you're there and experiencing it with her and sydney um sweeney you know to be honest i, I don't know how much i looked at her face but i don't <laughs> when i was i don't think there was a lot of great acting going on and and uh and it's almost like the exact same plot <laughs> between these Seriously. two. Seriously, so similar. I was like, who, I was very who surprised. Off who? It's like that year that Friends with Benefits and No Strings Attached came out mm-hmm. in the same year, and you watch yeah. both of them, and you go, "This is the same fucking movie." <laughs> and right. Yeah, it's like it reminded me of that. Yeah, that's a pretty common phenomenon with with uh, movies, but it's usually two studios like competing or trying to undercut the other one around like oh we know that warner brothers is coming out with a volcano movie later this year so let's rush and make a really shitty volcano movie a couple weeks before them so Mm -hmm. um people will be tired of volcano movies well both of these (laughs) movies have been in the works for a while right like immaculate was written like what forever ago years ago ago. and this is a prequel which was I imagine, you know, thought about and in the works for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like <laughs> Immaculate was actually kind of an interesting take on this kind of religious pregnancy kind of thing where it's it does kind of subvert expectations. And the first omen is like exactly what you would expect for the most part of like, oh, yeah, it's a yeah. They're impregnating her with the devil. You like, know, that's it's what you do. It's funny because after I got out of this movie and rated it on Letterboxd, I went back to my rating of Immaculate and I brought it down because I yeah. So so if you're if you listen to the Immaculate episode and you saw me give it, you heard me give it an eight. I'm bringing that down to a six because this movie was just so good. Like it was so like it was just it was so much better. And, like, you know what's going to happen, kind of. Like, you know what's going to happen at the end of this movie, I guess. But, like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Maybe it was because it was longer and they had more time and maybe there was more money put into it. But It yeah, was it pretty was filled really out story-wise. Yeah, like, it was. Yeah, I, was, was I wasn't bored. Out. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty engaging. It had um, a couple different moving parts that were <clears throat> that made it interesting. And it didn't, like, completely dial in on the mystery immediately it's Mm -hmm. not dialing in on on like 
the main plot point for for most of the movie like it really does take some time to establish the characters and um you know fill it out with interesting situations and dilemmas and um you know character arcs and and stuff like that and uh it's just a better movie all around but you know i mean there it has a big studio it's part of a big franchise there's a lot of money behind it it's not really comparing apples to apples um but it's definitely a case where that money was well spent and you can't say it was because of you know like audience buzz around it like there's no like any of the recognizable actors in this were kind of bit players mm-hmm. like they, mm-hmm. they're, they have a couple they had charles dance you know they had a couple people from that's uh, tywin lannister and, right <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, that's tywin lannister I was like what is his actor name i was like that's tywin Apparently nell free she was in I th- game of thrones she was in game of thrones i think she was the little girl she was cersei's daughter wait really cersei's daughter i'm pretty sure I didn't recognize Is that. that. What it was. Oh, was she the one that was poisoned? I can't, I can't she remember. had a hold very on, recognizable face, but I couldn't figure out where I'd seen her from. Yeah, she yeah. was Marcella Baratheon. So she was Cersei and and Robert's daughter. Yeah, she did get... Oh, okay. She went to go marry the Dorn Prince or something, and she got poisoned, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. Right, okay. So that's who she there was. Okay, so... But honestly not a big part of that series and not super recognizable yeah. from that from that series but like um, bill nye it, was in this yeah bill nye bill nye was probably one of the the more science guy was in this <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean i i think it was similar to immaculate in that it casts a lot of like foreign actors that probably are pretty well established and veterans in italy or or uh you know wherever but not known to us and they all did great Mm -hmm. um the cast was great um i think the writing was was really good like it really had a good slow slow burn for the mystery um had an interesting twist even if it was you know seen a little far off um but yeah it was it was a really good movie and it's worthy of being in the omen franchise um which is kind of quietly like one of the better you know i mean i don't know how quietly but it's kind of like the second tier for me of the 60s 70s um tentpole horror movies which is you know exorcist rosemary's baby and then omen is right underneath Mm -hmm. it and then maybe like amityville horror yeah and so yeah and you you know through the whole movie like what's going to happen like damien is born yeah so like he has to be like he like it it. just has to happen the first movie happened already so like there's no way of avoiding damien and uh i i liked at the end when they show um gregory peck's character as like the the father like i love that they they attach it to the first omen and not the remake like yeah, let's just avoid that. Let's just, <laughs> we'll just keep this in. I don't think There's I, a I remake didn't, of the I Omen? didn't see the remake. I'm pretty sure was it like a it was like a Netflix thing, right? No, it was a wide release one. Oh, really? Um, it was 2006. I think I saw on the Wikipedia that there's like hmm. seven Omen movies. Yeah, it was starring Julia Stiles and Lee Schreiber. What? I didn't even know about Julia that one. Julia Stiles, really? And Mia Farrow was in it. The fuck? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I did Julia not Stiles see this. was the mother in, in the remake. Um, I think I've gone on record that I'm not a big fan of Julia Stiles, but really, you know, it was still a good remake. I mean, it was it was uh, it was more or less like the the exact same film. Anyways, let's uh, <laughs> let's move on. What's your I, rating? I think it was great too. I don't think I give my score yet. I I'd, I'd give this one. I'd give this one a nine. I really oh, nice. liked it. Um, I think it's definitely worth seeing. Um, it's not like masterpiece level, but it does the Omen really good service, and the Omen is kind of a masterpiece. It's great. Yeah, um, obviously. And there's enough callbacks to the original that, like, you know, it doesn't overdo it, but it's all it's also like, ah, eh, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And some genuinely so, yeah. scary moments too, like yeah, yeah. I Some was really stuff. scared. Disturbing and scary. I was stuff. really scared, guys. <laughs> yeah. I kept looking to. There was also there was like a single guy that was like three uh, chairs away from me, and I kept looking at him like for comfort. I don't know why. I don't like. I, he, he didn't look at me. He's had a strong, I was just like strong presence. <laughs> I was like, I just need someone to like solidify that I'm scared for a good reason right now. Like I'm like I was freaking out, but yeah, it was. My theater it was, awesome. was actually pretty packed, which is super rare for my theater. So I guess we got a bunch of omen heads in Idaho Falls. Just... I also mine was mine was like half full, but I saw it in fucking Dolby Digital, so I think that's why it wasn't mm. so full because that's like the more expensive one. Um, but like it was the only time that I was like, oh, I'll get home and it won't be like that late. So I was like, I guess I'll just do Dolby Digital. And it was so scary. I wish I saw it in regular. <laughs> I think the it's noises worth... are too much. Yes. All right. If you're listening to these commercials, you should know that you don't have to. Head on over to patreon.com slash horror movie talk and check out all the tiers. Some of them give you early access to episodes, episodes without ads, um, bonus content, a bonus podcast. Guys, there's so much content over there. Oh my goodness. We're content queens over here. So go check out the Patreon. Also check out horrormovietalk.com slash shop where you can get shirts, hoodies, um, maybe one day we'll have the Make Horror Movie Talk Great Again hat. I don't know. It'll be cool. Stickers. We have exclusive stickers. Did we run out of those uh, uh, Lisa Frankenstein stickers yet? Uh, I have not put them on the shop yet. So <laughs> oh, no. shoot. Okay. <laughs> Still have every oh, single one of them. We'll put, the, put those on the shop. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, check out our resident artist, Dustin Goble, a professional artist who fucks hard. He also takes commissions for artwork from HMT fans. Contact him at... D G O E B E L zero zero on Instagram and make your artistic dreams come true. Tell him HMT sent you. Again, that number is 682 253 4468. Thanks again for listening and let's get into the spoilers. Okay, there are a couple of things that I didn't say in my review that I want to say now. Number one, I really did get a 70s vibe from this movie, which was cool. I really liked that. I really liked how it didn't... I mean, the effects were modern, which is good. Like, I'm fine with that. If the effects are good, then them being modern is totally fine. But, like, there was such, like, the pacing and just, like... I don't know the costumes everything about it was very 70s to me and I really liked that like yeah that opening scene really like there there's a couple things have you did you guys see the holdovers I know Max hasn't oh seen I loved did, that you movie the you're lucky so because cute. I haven't seen it and it was in Boston <laughs> and the theater that they go to um when they say it's the Orpheum but when they mm-hmm. go into the lobby it's the Somerville Theater, which I go to all oh. the time. It's like a, a hundred something year old theater. It's it's a beautiful place. So there's a really interesting thing about the holdovers. It's it's also very, very like very intentionally seventies feelings and they use uh they use some camera techniques like the uh what's it called? It's like the quick zoom. Um, yep. like a lot of stuff shot from afar and then like a quick zoom um to a subject close up and just the film grain and and all that stuff and and the overall quality of i think it was it was recorded in mono um so very very um uh, analog feeling um and 70s and they did a couple of those things in the opening shot uh the opening scene of the first omen where like that whole I don't know what the techniques they were using or like the angles, but that whole series where they're they're uh, cranking up the the stained glass mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. on the um, uh, on the side of the building, like for some reason the angles and how they shot that just felt so seventies, and I don't know 
what made it that way but like i think also the colors like the colors just felt like kind of muted a little bit and like a little bit grainy just a tad like not too much so it looked Mm. really cool right yeah i mean the 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 colors yeah but i but like literally the angles that they filmed in and i can't put my finger on it why that's not seen in modern movies it just feels like it's closer to um the action of the work versus like making everything look beautiful in frame with the the characters that you're focused on so maybe that's what it is it's like some of the characters that um you're you're supposed to be focusing on are a little further or a little wider um shot i think that um it's also like the way that that foreshadowed what was happening you didn't realize that it was foreshadowing in that moment it just kind of looked like an opening shot to a movie where oh they're putting this the stained glass windows on this church and then we're gonna go inside of the church and we're gonna talk to some priests like it was like the way that things are foreshadowed in movies now are like look at this gun look at this gun you see this gun here's a gun over here and it's a gun and we're gonna use that gun we're gonna use it what oh he's picking up the gun like it's more it's yeah. more obvious than that was like <laughs> i wasn't very privy to what was gonna happen with the stained glass until something happened with the stained glass I oh did, i don't know i, I thought, did feel I like it was, was a little obvious. obvious okay but the way it was shot was pretty in the shot <laughs> yeah i guess yeah. um i i think it was like you knew something was going to happen because it's, you know. Well, I just kept something. being like, stop walking underneath them. They're working. Something could happen. Don't <laughs> yeah. walk there. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I mean, that was probably. Have you guys seen the first Omen? Like I've the seen the first Omen. Omen. You have? The original Omen? No, I've seen the first Omen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> have you seen the 1976 film the omen Bryce, don't I make have. me answer that come on you know there's gonna be a comment about it <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> i have so seen, it, seen it but it's um it's definitely been a while and i was thinking of re-watching it for this but i ended up not doing it because i really was so scared of this movie <laughs> like i can't even do it yeah, again because that was but it's really good. I mean, the first Omen, the original Omen, is an insanely incredible movie. Like, very good. Yeah. Very okay, good. To keep, yeah, them, I mean, it's the- to keep them separated, let's call the first Omen movie the OG Omen. The OG and this Omen. one is OG the first Omen. Omen. Okay? So we can't okay. keep calling this them both the first, the first Omen. Omen. <laughs> right, right. You're correct. Um, so the OG Omen, it there's a really famous scene and and a lot of foreshadowing about basically someone getting skewered with a a pole Mm -hmm. uh in the movie and so this first scene is kind of a callback to that uh because it has a pole falling and you just see it from the perspective of someone seeing a pole a pole falling through their head basically but um that's kind of a fake out but it's it's a it's a nice callback to the original movie I thought in a creative way and and the way they shot it was pretty beautiful and there's a lot um, of callbacks it was a great in this opening movie, um with the deaths yeah. in my opinion like there's um the, the I wouldn't know the woman who who lights herself on fire um right. that's like one of the most fa- I think to me that's the most memorable and famous scene yeah. in the first omen yeah is but the come nanny. on they stole that from Immaculate let's be real. No, they stole, the <laughs> they stole they that stole from the Omen. They stole that from the nineteen seventy six Omen. Yeah, <laughs> with the nanny like hanging herself out the window at the birthday party. Oof. And then you know it's kind of similar because it's what it's like May Day or something. Like these the little girls are having a little party outside. And yeah, I mean that one was a little weird because like that one felt like they were trying to shove that in. Yeah. To like oh we gotta we gotta make sure this particular death is in the Omen movie, but it makes more sense in the OG movie because it's a caretaker trying to, you know, help and groom this kid. And when she says it's all for you, it like, it makes sense. What's up with nuns committing public suicide? Why do they all want it to be public? It's a cult. I don't know. And, and this one, it was like, it was just another, it didn't make sense. It didn't, it didn't make any sense. Plot wise. No. 
especially the line it's all for you like i it yeah it was, what, it was what about that weird. doesn't make sense I she thought didn't it was have fine. to die like there was no well reason. no but she's the the creepy fodder character you just she's in I the just shot didn't to be like creepy her. i just didn't like her yeah I, but she wasn't she wasn't really involved in like the upbringing of this woman she was, was the same age as her basically yeah i thought she was it's saying just, it's it all didn't for make you it, f- i mean to it, it makes sense it's okay it's it's like it works enough but it doesn't work as much as the og where it's like okay sure this is more of a demonstration of devotion to yeah. the person that deserves devotion in those people's eyes basically. i just didn't feel like it didn't not work Am I? Is that I was fine with it. I, I thought it was right? like yeah. creepy and crazy, yeah, it, but um, it does work. The only reason I uh, knew that it, she wasn't saying it to Carlito was because the um, what's her name um, Margaret had gone out the night before and presumably had sex with that guy. That's what you would mm-hmm. assume, right? So when she goes, it's a boy, she's looking at Margaret and she's not looking at Carlita. And I was like, oh my God, this bitch is pregnant. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And then she kills herself. And, you're, and so I knew she was saying it to Maggie. That's the moment that I realized that Maggie was Damien's mom. Uh... Yes, I was I like, see. no. See, I I thought the moment where it was like, it was when she comes to after the night out. I'm like, okay, well, some shit happened, mm-hmm. and those those guys were probably in on it. Like that was my so let's assumption, but it was pretty fleeting. It was like, yeah. that's a possibility that they could go, mm-hmm. um, but it wasn't like set in stone. But yeah, it made sense, like the twist, and I think it was delivered pretty well, yeah. and there was enough. There's enough question about it that um, it maintained the interest. So let's introduce kind of like the setup. So (laughs) Yeah, should we? (laughs) Margaret gets to the airport or the train station or wherever in Rome, and she's picked up by the father. It's literally the the exact same scene as the opening of Immaculate. And she's taken, you know, to the orphanage where she's introduced to everybody. She's introduced to Carlita who licks her face for some reason because she's a disturbed child. And so it's kind of just like creepy, weird orphanage vibes. And then she goes to her apartment with her roommate who is also a a nun, but is like super uh, hot and she's an novitiate. She's like always wearing like clothes like she's going to a club or something she's Um, so hot she is hot (laughs) and then um she convinces her to go to a bar which is kind of where she lets loose for like the first time in her life and has fun but gets too drunk and kind of blacks out and doesn't remember what happened that night and so she's reassured that nothing too bad happened but she doesn't really know yeah, because her friend is like, you came home with me, so I didn't let anything go too far. And there's a spider on her face when she wakes up. Yeah, I Oh, like my that. goodness. <laughs> my arachnophobia was getting triggered uh, on and off throughout this movie. Also, should we, like... Th- so the beginning, the very beginning, sets up that there has been a child born, and there's a photo with um, some of the characters and a baby. Um, and on the back it says Sienna, I think, or mm. I think that's what it was, Sienna. And um, it's Tywin Lannister, um, and it's the dad from The Witch, and they're both priests, and Tywin Lannister's like, you need to like find this girl because like it's the way that she was conceived, I can't even talk about it. And then you get flashes to like a woman with a veil over her face, like getting raped by a beast. That's what it looks like. I mean, horrifying. What, yes, uh, it's very a scary crazy gross. scene. Yeah, but it's not fully shown, obviously. Like you just kind of get bits and pieces and you kind of have to put it together. And then um you know, uh the dad from the I forget his name. The dad from the witch is like I you need to tell me more and Tywin Lannister is like I I'm I can't even deal with this and then he dies and he's honestly he like smiles a little bit because I think he gets brain scooped yeah brain scooped by a 
by Paul. Yeah, it was a little. Yeah, it was a little confusing because I, I didn't know if I was supposed to think that the pole went into him or it just grazed him. I thought it went into and him, but it didn't. <laughs> kind of looks like it grazed yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, in which case he's probably fine, to be honest. Like, yeah, his whole chunk. occipital lobe is scooped out, but there's there's worse brain trauma than that, and people survive. I guess he's old. I I think they just needed to do That's something. True. I don't know. I don't know. I think... The brain freaks me out. I don't yeah, want any so, part of my brain scooped. Apparently, Ralph Innocent's character, the the father from the witch, mm-hmm. um, Father Brennan. Um, oh right, there you go. Is is actually a character from the OG Omen, so he's playing a longer, a younger version of. Oh. Of, oh um, really? The character played by Patrick Trotton, oh. which I think is the guy that gets skewered. Um, in the Omen. Oh. Um, if I'm right. Uh, that would be. Is that right. I don't know. Or no? Does he get? Is he the guy that gets cut in half? Wow, there are a lot of homages to yeah. the OG Omen deaths. Like, almost all of them. Hold on. Are... Father Brennan, who claims to have been present at Damien's birth, is speared to death in a freak accident. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This this guy. Yeah. He's the younger version of this guy. Oh, Spoilers for OG shot. Omen. I remember. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so... It's really interesting because Father Brennan in this movie, um, I don't know. When I watched The Witch, it was the same thing. He has such a deep voice that I don't know what he's saying sometimes. Like, I, yeah. it's so deep that it's like at this such, like, this octave that's so low that I'm like, wait, like, I need captions on. Like, I, I don't, like, I don't know what he's saying, but I do, I do like the voice, though. It's fun. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I I think it's just adds such a like rich quality to any character that he's doing. You're like, geez, this guy's got gravitas, and it's literally just the lowest voice you've ever heard. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why he's um, so good in the Green Knight. Like, that's it's really awesome. That's right. Um, so, Max, have you seen the Green Knight? <sighs> Bryce, you're killing me right now. <laughs> Should we just go down a list of movies for the afterpod and just ask Bryce every single movie? <laughs> this is not going to be good. <sighs> All right. So um, oh. Father Brennan <laughs> kind of meets Margaret like in, a, a, I don't know where she is, actually. She's like sitting by a fountain. And he basically says, like, hey, yeah, I need to tell you something. she's hung over as fuck. She's just hung over. She yeah. needs to sit down. <laughs> like, she's like, I got to go into the city and sit. I, I love that. <laughs> the the next scene after she gets home, like, it's all the kids saying, good morning, teacher. And she's like. She's like. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> just. Okay. <laughs> I Okay. Can we talk? Sorry. I don't want to skip over this. This. Uh night out on the town scene oh, because okay, yeah. this is one of the most effective scenes in the movie i think it's awesome and it really helps develop the character of margaret and she's great through the whole thing because like her dealing with whether because she's she's like um you know dressed up like a trollop no she looks so good she looks so good Um, it's such a good outfit so she's she's dressed up and like her being so uncomfortable um showing her body and like putting herself out there like it was so great how they dealt with that and it was so believable and then the the scenes in the club where she's like letting herself free is like very really effective and slowly but surely too to be honest pretty yeah. hot um, she's really pretty she is i mean both of them her and the was it maria caballero lose yeah her roommate when she yeah, roommate. when the roommate gets um married to jesus um she, th- she looked awesome in that wedding dress like i was like holy shit like jesus is one lucky man like uh, that's crazy 
<laughs> you know, Jesus has been described as a lot of things, but in terms of yeah, a lucky man, <laughs> yeah, not not one of those that you usually associate. But I mean, you look at all these nuns that he's married to, right? Some of them are like, right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, I just really they're like they're nuns. We gotta, we gotta have a, we. We got to have a segment where just, uh, I think just me and Sydney just need to drool over women um, in in the movie. Yeah. Uh. Max is too, you know, he's too above it. I'm not, a, I'm like not above it. I just, he's, you know, got to watch what I say. He cares about his wife and whatnot, you know. <laughs> oh, and you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <Max is all laughs> my I love dad, my wife. So I'm not going to talk about women. Um, you know, it's funny. My boyfriend said one of his favorite um, parts about watching movies with me is how I always like am thirsting over a character. Every mm-hmm. single movie I watch, like I'm like, oh my God, isn't she so hot? Isn't he so hot? Like the whole time. And he said that he actually likes that. So I have I have approval to do this. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun. Um. Anyway, so like that that scene was super effective in setting up the character and like explaining how, you know, she's very conflicted and she's trying to be a good girl and she takes this very seriously. Um in all the ways that I don't think Immaculate did a great job. No. Yeah. At all. Um so Yeah, they didn't really set Sydney Sweeney up very well. So then the rest of the movie is is basically Maggie trying to figure out what's going on with weird girl Mm -hmm. well so father brennan comes to her and is like hey there's something weird going on with weird girl um you should come over to my apartment and i'll tell you all about it and which she's like like, no that's gross yeah Yeah, i'm not going to your apartment um and then it cuts to her uh you know teaching uh and talking is this uh is this when they're all out in the courtyard area and they're like the kids are playing and or is that later does that happen before or after she goes to his apartment? Oh, no, 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 no. So um, Carlita, she just hears that Carlita has been put in the bad room because she bit somebody. And um, that is when she talks to her and is like, hey, I was I was a troubled kid too, but like turns out that like there wasn't anything wrong with me and there's nothing wrong with you. And then she hears screaming because there's a woman giving birth and you see <gasps> the, the miracle of birth. Ah, I hated this so much. Oh my god! You just get to watch <laughs> life coming into the world uh, in the shape of a demonic hand. But yeah, still you literally beautiful. see a vagina birthing. Yeah, you do a fucking demon arm. Like I didn't know they were gonna show that much, and they did. And I was like, Ugh. I mean childbirth is a miracle and it's beautiful everyone but oh my god in a horror movie with a demon hand coming out of someone's pussy hole it was extremely graphic yikes <laughs> it was so fucked dude you know honestly like if you know anything about birthing the the most disturbing part isn't anything they showed it's the implied episiotomy um what's <laughs> in, that in the birth oh sydney um, I don't know. An episi- episiotomy is uh, also known as a, perineo- a perineotomy, which is a surgical incision made between the va- vagina and anus during childhood <gasps> to make the vag- vaginal opening wider for the baby to pass through. <laughs> so it basically turns no partition. two holes into one. No partition. For, for a minute. Um, so you get to experience... Um, uh being a being a uh, duck for a little bit in your life oh my god having a was it a cloaca oh my is god. that what it is i think so that sounds right wow i didn't know that that That's i know gross. i know that women tear but i didn't know that it was they do that on purpose sometimes well i think it's yeah. to control it right because if right. you tear without the control it could be way worse <laughs> yeah you just make a little snip and then it'll tear by <laughs> on its own you know it's My like mom the had two C sections. The bag of chips. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean that that scene is pretty rough. Um, and yeah. It's also right after yeah. she says that she hasn't she doesn't have visions anymore. And 
Um, then she sees a demon hand being birthed by a woman and she like passes out. She freaks out. Nothing's wrong with her. And then they're like, it's, I think it was Bill Nye who's like, oh, um, the miracle the of childbirth fair. gets you. <laughs> the miracle of childbirth gets everyone sometimes. And then you realize that that a baby was born. It wasn't like mm -hmm. a demon coming out of someone. Like, so she's still having visions. Yeah, I mean, it's. There's a lot of, I mean, she talks about how she had hallucinations or she was seeing things. And mm. so there's this very strong, um, unreliable narrator element to the movie, but it's never really made clear if she has seen things or if, because I mean, in that case, was she hallucinating the demon hand coming out or was there actually a demon hand coming out? I don't think I she was. was a hallucination because later it shows them like holding a baby, right? And it's like, oh, baby was born. No, Did, okay. but... Because then, cause then in that case, like the whole thing where she's saying she used to see things, it was setting it up to where she was remembering basically getting, you know, um, you know, raped by a jackal. Um and but that actually happened. So yeah, like, but like was she getting hallucinations when she was younger? So too. I think the and thing was is that so her and Carlita are the, the big reveal. They're sisters. They were their mother was raped by a beast and created them, but they need a boy to be the Antichrist. So that's what's happening. And Carlita and uh, is having the same visions as. Margaret like that's established by Carlita's drawings and th because mm -hmm. when Margaret is looking at the drawing she like has this remembrance so I'm thinking that since they're the only two um kids that survived this weird you know breeding process that this cult of nuns is going through um I think that both of their hallucinations are completely valid in being real to them. Like, I don't know if they're actually real, but I think because they are half beast, they, they ha there has to be something not the same about them that is to mm -hmm. other humans, you know? So, like, they definitely are seeing things that are true to them and real to them. Like, I, like when uh, Margaret's locked in the bad room later in the movie and oh, the thing comes out of the corner and it's the fucking nun who <laughs> litters on one I was, like, crying at this point. I was like, I can't. I can't fucking do this anymore. That was a like, creepy scene. Oh, and it's like, uh, 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 and I was like, I was so scared when I went to bed. I was like, something's going to come out of the corner of my fucking room and I don't want to see it. Um, but like that stuff, like I believed her, you know, and it's also like kind of solidified. You know, she sees the drawing from Carlita on the floor in the bad room. And then when she gets wheeled off to go have sex with her father or beast, um, mm -hmm. all the paintings on the ceiling are the visions that she's been seeing so just tell yeah. me what you want me to fuck <laughs> father beast um, father beast <laughs> yeah so it should also be established that the so the church says that no one believes in god anymore and so they need to do something drastic to bring people back to the faith and so their plan is to birth the antichrist which will devastate the world so much but just enough, they want to, like, control it. So just enough that people come back to the church and then they can, like, you know, do away with the Antichrist. So the problem is... Genius plan. <laughs> yeah, it's it's foolproof. How could it go wrong? Um, the problem is every time they do this, they keep getting girls. They can't figure out how to get a boy born. And, you know, boys are evil, so um, they need a boy. And so their new theory, which I don't know where this comes from or why they decide this, maybe just because it's, you know, it's more evil, is to do an, do an incest baby to get a boy. So that's the plan. Bruh. <laughs> yeah. What's, yep. what's worse than uh, rape? Incest rape. Yeah. Mm, that's how we'll yeah. get them. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of levels of, of creepiness to, to all of it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Got, it, just like, uh, anyways, I don't know. I'm losing my track of thought. Okay. Um, it's okay, Insert, 
insert incest porn joke here. Ew. No, okay. don't insert that. Don't insert, um, insert anything, actually. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty gross. And so so what Margaret thinks is so this is Margaret finds this out when she goes to Father Brennan's um place and like he but she thinks he's crazy, right? She's like, That's so insane. So stuff keeps happening. I think the nun dies, which we were talking about. She lights herself on fire. She goes, it's a boy. And then Margaret believes it. And she's like, oh my God, they're going to like, you know, inseminate Carlita, who's just a little girl. Like that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. She's just a little girl. So she takes Carlita aside. They go on like a field trip. They, she takes Carlita aside and she's like, um, has anyone done anything to you that has been like traumatic? And Carlita's like, I don't think so. Like, what do you mean? And then she starts scaring Carlita by talking about these things. Carlita runs away. And then she's having more and more visions, like Margaret's having visions. And then there's a riot outside, a protest. And um, Margaret well, keeps having visions. And Sylvia, the head nun, is like clocking this. And you're like, Oh my God, what's going on? And Sylvia, by the way, Sonia something, she was in one episode of Sex in the City where Samantha decides to be a lesbian and that was her girlfriend. Yeah. Um, Which one? Sex in the City when um, Samantha d which, decides... To, I mean, which which uh, which actress was oh, it? Oh, it's um, the first Sylvia. Um, her name is Sonia Braga. Oh, Sister Sylvia. Okay. Sonia what I Braga. What was interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. about the field trip part was she sits Carlita down and she's like, "Has anyone like ever touched you in a way that was like bad?" And she's like, "I don't know. I kind of think so, but I'm not sure." And then Margaret just doesn't believe women, and she's like, "No, it's all in your head." <laughs> You're making it up. <laughs> and Carlita gets This is upset. how false memories are created, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So it was a very funny scene to me because I was like, wait, why doesn't she believe her? She was the one who suspected that something had happened. And then when she says, like, I think something might have happened, she's like, no, I used to have visions and it was all in my head. So this is all in your head, too. Just just kind of a bizarre scene. Yeah, that is that is weird. But nothing happened to Carlita. She, I think that these girls harbor the memories of their mother, um, in some way, kind of like um. Well, Paula Carlita's Trades. drawing pictures of like rape. It's well, yeah. I mean, it's it's a little confusing. I think they're grooming her. Yeah, that way because it, the whole thing is like they're waiting until this girl. I mean, the 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 premise of like showing the picture is like they're waiting for this girl who they assume is in this picture to rejage to have a baby and she's just nearly there and so you're not sure whether you know she was impregnated or not yeah um, and so that's where what all the the questioning was about so yeah i don't think she was pregnant uh but i mean it would make sense if like they're treating her horribly and like grooming her and maybe like getting her ready to be the mother mm -hmm. of this they probably are demon baby. you're probably right because yeah. if it doesn't work out with margaret then they're gonna have to go to carlita so did because yeah, otherwise why would she why was she drawing all these weird disturbing things did the know? mom like the the carlita and margaret's mom like was that the same woman 14 times Lita. Um, I don't like know if it says because they said in the beginning that they had one volunteer. I thought to like, but if mm. if they're the same, it probably was the same woman because they're sisters, right? Well, they, they or, I mean, they're I guess they sisters because they have the sisters. same father. I guess. Uh, so I guess it doesn't really say. I don't think. Yeah. No, because it was over the series, so it was over several years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it was a long time. Like, what was the yeah, I mean Carlita was twenty. I mean um, um, Margaret was twenty one. I saw that by the. Um, I put that together with when we saw the birth certificate things, and then Carlita was eleven, so they were ten years apart. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know. So is this when uh, Maggie goes into the office? She's like sneaking into the office to learn more, while her roommate is being, uh, you know, married, and. 
she oh yeah they tell the margaret to step back from nun duties because she keeps yeah. she's just went to the bad room she's being she's not she's not good she's not good in that yeah so she finds this like hidden door that leads down to this area with these files and that's where she learns about how there's been all these demon babies being born and so she grabs the files she goes upstairs she tries to get carlita to get out but she's kind of backed into a corner and then she's taken into the bad room oh that's is. when she goes into the bad room so that brings um, us to kind of where we were talking about where she sees the nun who committed suicide but i guess is she dead she i don't know that her she looked but, pretty bad so she hides I don't know if this the, is a vision or what. The files that she got, she hid them underneath Carlita's bed and told the priest something, the other priest that's been like hanging out with her, I don't know, the younger guy. Um, she told him so- something that alluded to where the files were. Um, and after she has a mental breakdown for um, a long time in this room, um, seeing things and finding Carlita's drawing on the ground um, that's identical to the drawing that's in the basement. So, yeah, maybe Carlita was raped. Yeah. It's possible. That's sad. Um, yeah. Did you guys get the sense that there must have been a scene removed with this young priest? Because all of a sudden he's like a super important character like, yeah. immediately. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I didn't really notice. Yeah, he doesn't get a lot of screen time for the first, like, two-thirds of the movie. Yeah. And there's not even many knowing glances between them. Just all of a sudden, he's like, oh, yeah, I just took it upon myself to uh, search your room. There Um, had to be one scene earlier in the movie. I I feel like I remember, but I don't know. So, yeah, all this stuff happens, and then the, the last act, like really ramps up like uh, goes cr- really yeah. quickly it goes insane and because she gets she realized that she was impregnated and then upon that realization her her uh uterus just explodes into a full like nine months pregnancy but like before that so they're they're on their way to go get an abortion right that's the plan uh-huh. and they well they go to father brennan's a... house first and that's when she realizes she is uh, they're looking through the birth the documents and that's when she realizes mm-hmm. she is also the beast's daughter and then she goes oh my god i'm pregnant let's go get yeah. bobo yes so. so and then they get into a car crash which gave uh sydney ptsd it was and, so loud <laughs> it was like and this oh my is god. probably my favorite scene of the whole movie is um maggie after the car crash is like she's like transforming because she goes from being like two weeks pregnant to uh about to give birth but she's also like seemingly like possessed like she can't control her body and she's like convulsing and it just like looked great like it was a really great performance i it looked like almost it was like kind of unique the way she like portrayed being like taken over it was really so interesting. it wasn't yeah, because she was becoming very dog like you know because it's like talks about how they're you know being bred with a jackal but it's i mean when we see it it's more like a jackal man beast thing and yeah yeah she's she's like freaking out and transmorgifying into you know some kind of half beast but you know it's really she's just acting it out and then they just add in some more sound effects to really seal the deal it felt like a little bit like arbitrary because it's not because then she goes back to normal for the rest of the movie more or less but yeah it is a disturbing scene and effective i just don't know what necessarily the point they were making with it i do want to say honestly i do want to say that like i think she acted that scene incredibly it was so creepy so gross but you know how she has like white stuff and blood coming out of her um like that's happening yeah i noticed that so yeah i saw that have you guys seen Possession 1981? Uh-uh. Okay. No. So that's my favorite movie of all time. Um, and I, I think we should do a pretentious review on it. Um, I could handle the next pretentious review because this is a good, good fucking movie. Like, um, Or we could just do a regular review because I'm sure that listeners let us know. Um, but 
this movie is incredible. It is like top tier acting, top tier everything. It has everything you would want in a movie, and it's and it's scary. And there is a scene where uh, Anna uh, Isabel Adjani Ad, Adjani um, she has. Th- there's a scene where she's in an empty uh, train station, and she flails and acts like she's being exercised while white stuff and blood is pouring out of her um and it's like almost exactly like this scene and i was like oh my god they're i i think they're paying homage to possession um which i hope they are because i think nell free did a great job with that but isabella johnny is the queen of possessions like in general the queen Um, of shooting white stuff out of her body i think you should definitely like yeah was there anything suggestive about that i don't know um if i'm the only one that thought that was a little weird just white goo coming out of her mouth i mean if you look up um the subway scene of possession um it's like three minutes long so you couldn't play the whole thing here but it's almost exactly like that um so i think that's all that they were doing was but i don't know i don't know well this it really goes balls to the walls crazy right here because so she like passes out and is taken into the chapel or like you know some some church but it's like i don't know underground or something and she is strapped down to the table and she gives birth to dun dun dun, dun twins which was i didn't expect that because i haven't no. seen the og omen uh, i don't know if that plays a part in it but no no well i don't know twins. i don't know if there's sequels that have like the, the girl in it but i think they were just setting that up for sequels for this in my yeah, opinion. which I think would be really cool because I would like to see more of this. Yeah, that was that was my assumption. Was it? I mean, because they've it's in the same universe as the the OG Omen. So did they retcon been, everything else? Well, I mean, there's already like three. I mean, I guess they can do whatever they want, but there was three direct sequels to that one. I think I, I know that it went. I know there's at least an Omen three. I think Omen Three is starring um, um, what's his name, Sam. Okay, there's oh, Damien Omen played. Two, The Final Conflict, and The Awakening. Okay. Mm. Well, one of them stars the guy that played Grant in Jurassic Park. He's also in <laughs> Possession. Is he? He is. He's the husband. Oh, I've seen Jurassic together. Park. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Max. <laughs> but you. not The Lost World. No, I haven't because seen Because you Lost don't World. know Julianne Moore. I just... Okay, give me time. Give me time. <laughs> You'll see. I can't wait. I'm so excited on the Afterpod to tell you all the things I watched this week. Okay. Okay. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I think we... That's pretty much covers it. I mean, so... That pretty much covers it. Then they give give birth and there's Damien, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she's like, she's going to kill Damien. She decides not to because it's her baby or whatever. And then she Mm -hmm. uh, tries to... She kills Bill Nye and then they try to kill her. So they, like, burn down everything and, like, Carlita's down there trying to save her and they don't even, like, no one even holds the girl baby. Like, no one cares about it. But Carlita that was gets... was so sad to me. I was like, go get the baby! I was, like, crying. I was like, I hate this. But, um, but Carlita gets them all out of there and then it flashes to, like, years later, it's kind of, it, Then it's like, oh, we have to give it to this guy and it's Gregory Peck and they switch out the babies after they had a stillborn and... Then it goes to like their uh, Carlita, Margaret, and the girl are living like, years later in like a cabin in some snowy mountain. And um, mm-hmm. uh, the dad from the Father Brennan comes back and is like, They're going to come get you. And she's like, Get the fuck out of here. And, the, and then he's like, They named your baby Damien. And then that's dun, the end. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yep. So yeah, that's the movie. Who would you recommend this to? 
everyone. It's scary. It's yeah, scary. any of the fans of the OG Omen, like it, it fits right in. Um, Even if you're not. If you're a fan of like 70s horror, like it does have a pretty familiar feel, um, pace, a little faster pace than most 70s horror movies, but um, it's a it's a really good entry. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd recommend it to anyone. Probably not, you know, if you're not a fan of uh, watching birthing videos. Yeah, the miracle of birth. <laughs> If you're not a fan of watching The Miracle of Birth, you know, steer clear. Uh, but other than that, you know, it should be fine. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I, I, I think if you, like, are one of those people who are like, I need something scary. I, I'm not scared. I want to be scared. Um, this movie's pretty scary. So, yeah, go check it out. All righty, let's get into where did all the money go? Don't look at the don't look at the game looked. on the document. I already looked. Don't. Oh, it's ruined yeah, now. Yeah, it's a rookie move, Max. You have to put it on a separate word document. I x out of it. I pre- I'm pretending I didn't know. Is it ruined? How much did you see? No, I just do it. It's fine. Uh, it's ruined. What's the game? Explain the game, and I'll tell you if it's ruined or not. <laughs> There's not that much to it. I'm going to give you a movie. You're going to guess how much it was made for, and I'm going to reveal how much it was made for. And w- if it's more money than we expected, we try to see like how th- in the world they spent that much money on that movie. That's kind of the gist. I remember the first and okay. last one, so I'll guess the exact okay. one for those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to remember them all, yeah. but I don't think any of them are over 100,000, so you've kind of limited yourself. I mean, hundred million. The game is ruined. Okay. The game is a little ruined. Night but... Swim. How much was million. Night Swim made for? <laughs> Fifteen million. Yeah, this game sucks. Okay. <laughs> and that's the episode, <laughs> folks. I don't, I don't remember the other ones. I don't remember the other I, ones. I don't remember it's the fine. other ones. It's Call six eight two two five three four four six eight. No, we'll play. We'll play just yes. in case, like the the listeners want to uh, play along. So. Yeah. Uh, yes, Night Swim was made for $15 million. How in the world did they spend $15 million on a movie that was pretty much shot know. in two locations? Dude, $15 million is a very low budget. I don't, it's I don't know a ton you're... of money, though. That's the thing. It's so much money. It's more money than you or I will ever see in our entire lifetimes. And they spent well, it to make a, a pool movie. Hey, don't underestimate well, me and my success pool. that could be in the future. You don't know how much money I'm going to have, okay? Number one. Well, once well, I leave the show, the, movie, it'll really pop off. And... You've, got to, you've got to hire like a building full of professionals that know how to operate machinery and electronics and wiring. And how many the... professionals did it take to get the Marco Polo scene? Um probably dozens i could do it with two crazy because it was like i don't know not only do you have to have like camera operators and grips and and sound people and and all that stuff but now you have to have them that know how to do it underwater Mm. that's true you know so 15 million dollars that could have gone to help somebody has now made a pool movie 15 million dollars is like nothing 15 million dollars is like a very very low budget movie nowadays like how much a- money did the movie make let's find that out let's see night swim what is it called uh money make box office box office <laughs> sorry <Let's see. laughs> I'm just curious. It's just so fascinating to me. the The reason I wanted to do this is because it I made fifty four million dollars. That... Yeah. Okay. So it's yeah. a cash cow. It's a it's a four x return on their investment. I just pretty good. I want to know why it takes this much money to make a movie. Because no, I mean this this question is is better if you ask like. Why does it take so much money to make a Marvel movie? Like, you know, like the a Star Wars movie or a Marvel movie costs three hundred that three hundred million dollars. Yes, because they're going to make a billion dollars off of it. But if I was um, to be given one singular million dollars, 
I think I could do it. I bet. I, think I, I can make a good movie. <laughs> All right, go for it, Max. <laughs> you guys. And then you'll be you'll be one of these independent filmmakers that that spam our inbox and be like, I just made a horror movie that is a. Uh, you know, we showed it to the, one of the guys that used to wear the Michael Myers mask, and he said, oh, cool. And uh, we want to make sure we mention that in our press release. It's nothing to do with the movie whatsoever, but he does know about it, and so you should review it and uh, give us press. Honestly, $15 million, like about $10 million of that is probably marketing. Five million dollars is probably yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Matt, actually, Matt Damon was on Hot Ones, that um YouTube series, and he explained something like that. Like I don't know what movie it was. I forget exactly what he said, but like he was like, yeah. So the movie was like five mil to make, but we spent like twenty mil in marketing. And if we didn't do that, I feel like no one would have seen the fucking movie. Like it's just, mm. you know, it sucks. It sucks how expensive marketing is. But at least they made their money back. Horror movies usually do. Well, horror movies always make their money back because mm-hmm. even if it's, you know, Night Swim, they're going to make $50 million on it. Um, all right. Well, how much do you think The Exorcist Believer took to make? Um, I mean, that's higher. That's going to be... I'd be surprised if it was less than $50 million. It was less than $50 million. I'll say... Okay, well now you gave me a hint. Um is it like thirty? It is thirty million. Thirty million. I literally million I'm not even joking. I didn't even look. I didn't even look. Zillion dollars to make one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I could see it being thirty mil. Um yeah, it's a bad movie though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to hate this game. Do you have um, imaginary on there? No, because I actually think that Imaginary spent all its money on its VFX, which mm. still look pretty terrible, but that has to be where it went, right? So the budget mm-hmm. was like 10 to 12 million and it made 36 million. So I guess 10 to yeah. 12 million, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, horror movies, that's that's the thing. It's like the only genre that's profitable with low budget movies, you know? Like no one's... I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't know why dramas, why you can't make more like ten million. Is it because if you're, money? I th- this is why I think because if you're a horror fan, you don't really care what the movie is. You're gonna go see it because it's the new horror. Yeah, you're movie. gonna see any shit that they put out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, if you're like a comedy fan, are you going to every single comedy movie that comes out? Or no. like, I mean, maybe, but I mean, if if it looks good. Like, I really but if, never. But if it see, doesn't yeah, look I mean, good, I'm still going to see the new horror movie. I only ever <laughs> see like dramas and horror movies in theaters I, and action movies because action movies are the best in theaters. Like they're not as good at home. But like I'm never going to the movies for a comedy. I'm always going to wait till it's because it's just better to watch a comedy with like your friends when you can like be annoying at home. You know. Oh, I don't know. I disagree with really? that. I think I think a comedy in the theater is the best experience because you you're laughing that's true with dozens of other people i'll I'll tell you what like i don't think i've ever seen a comedy in theaters that's why i'm saying that i'm not a big comedy i didn't get into comedy either except for like kids comedies yeah i I didn't get into comedy movies until like a few years ago because i just thought i was so edgy and cool for only watching like horror and thriller movies and like like really serious like fucked up movies and like psychological fucking mind game movies and i'd be like i'm not watching a comedy mom don't put on napoleon dynamite again stop (laughs) (laughs) you guys are weird i like them now i just love i just love movies of all types and that's why you're everyone's favorite me too don't get me wrong i'll tell you what like one of the best theater experiences is seeing any one of the jackass movies in the oh, I wish I got mm. to do that, that. I never did. The most rewarding is it, experience. What's wrong with me? Why don't I like jackass? Like I watch it and I'm it's just like gross. Mm. I love it. It just says guys getting hurt and like doing gross stuff and I'm just like oh, They're so fun I see, to watch. I see people get hurt more than that on Instagram reels just from my casual scrolling. 
it's not the I, same. There's there's genuine creativity in the Jackass movies. That's that's. Uh, I haven't laudable. watched. Me- I think I've watched one of them. So. Okay. Well. If you only watched the latest one, that was no. The worst it was one. a while it was ago. Really it was good. still good. It was still good, and it was it wasn't. Uh, there's gonna be a comment about that, by the way. That's that we just made a comment. I will say I do like comedies though. Like I love Young Frankenstein. I love Blazing Saddles. I'm like I'm I'm Young Frankenstein. I, 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 I watch is funny movies. Amazing. Like uh, Bottoms was really good. If anyone saw that from last year, that was hilarious. Um, yeah. Fuck. Blazing Saddles is my favorite comedy. Anyways. Okay, let's keep going. Um, let's get through the rest of these movies. No, I'm Max. done with this game. Uh, 682-253-4468. <laughs> Leave us a voicemail. Hit, hit us with a song. Oh. Yeah, that's you, Bryce. <laughs> hit us with a song. Bye. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Is that Ringo? <laughs> it is! Uh, <laughs> I just hit the skull through the spreadly wood. He had no face! Horror! Uh, that didn't sound good. Wow, that didn't sound good.